I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Tom Calandra of the Calandra Report. Just a reminder, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Tom, thank you so much for being here online with me today. Charlotte, thank you. You, you do wonders for our service here at the Calandra Report, and I actually get some terrific ideas from you. I mean, a good perspective on mining and on other things going on up there in Vancouver and Toronto and Calgary and so on. So good to be here. Great to have you and thank you for that. We're gonna start, I think, with kind of a broad question because I remember when we last spoke back in January, you were talking about kind of a broader market melt up that was happening. And I think that's a theme that we have seen develop even further over the last six months with speculation about whether this is a new commodity super cycle. So I wanted to take or start there and get your thoughts on if you think that was, that's what's happening, what you see going on there. Charlotte, uh, you know, the melt up, a, a term that uh, we've been using since the mid nineties, a, a, a melt up involves lots of things. Uh, and it's not just happening, of course, in, in the mining names and the commodities titles and in the metals themselves, but everywhere, small caps, micro caps, meme stocks, you know, and all that kind of stuff. The, the question I think you and I have to ask ourselves is with metals, the underlying commodities, copper, gold, palladium, sort of, um, well, some of them hitting new highs or fresh highs or the highest points they've seen in 11 years, let's say, in the case of gold. Are they going to surpass those highs now or are they gonna hang out? I'm not gonna be like every kind of metals believer out there, fanatic and say that we're in a super cycle unless we see more evidence, but I'd like to think we're in a super cycle. I, I'm not gonna pound the, the floor on it. I think there are a lot of obscure titles out there in mining and elsewhere too, that haven't seen love from investors, whether they're uh, stocks, bonds, uh, commodities, uh, SPACs, you know, special purpose acquisition corps and so on. But the obscure names are small. So I have to warn you that uh, they're quite speculative. Oh, and can I tell you, I'm wearing this. It's just a prop. I have a few props for us today, but I'm wearing this because for two reasons. One, it's the closest thing I have right now that's not in the wash to my, um, my Italy jersey because Italy's playing Spain right now. And I'm not sure, you said your, uh, your fiance, your husband uh, is, is watching it uh, now. They were tied 1-1. And of course that's in the Euro 2021. So I'm, since I'm Italian, Italian-American, I'm rooting for Italia. And um, the other thing is the, you know, the Tour de France. I mean, you know, here in North America, we don't pay that much attention to some of the European sports, whether it's the Euro or the Tour de France or uh, 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 other sports, European football being one, because we have many other things going on. I mean, just in the past two days, we have the finals in hockey. Montreal, the Habs trying to stay in there. Uh, down 3-1. We have the NBA uh, North America basketball finals. We have baseball. Uh, and, um, and I know that, that, you know, there's so much going on. We have the all-star game coming up. So I'd just like to give a little plug for uh, European football. Uh, I should say worldwide soccer, excepting the United States, which, which uh, doesn't call it football and bicycling and other things European because European investors, when it comes to mining and, uh, and mining stocks, very important. Uh, you know, some of the European investors, especially from Germany, as we know, the UK, they really give a, 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 an early bump up to some of these names because they have some of those folks there, if you go to some of the shows or talk to some of the people or go see companies in Europe, they really, really believe in the underlying commodity, silver, gold, platinum, palladium, copper, uh, rhodium, uh, iron ore. So that's just my, uh, my, my plug for you. I do have another prop, but I, I'll save it for later. 
Okay, we'll wait on that one. I'm sorry, I can't add much on the sports note. I'm, I'm just not so into the sports world, but I do, I do love to see the enthusiasm. Just going back to commodities, I know that you have, a, you're quite open-minded about the commodities that you look at. And, you know, we're talking about this super cycle idea, whether or not it's happening, I guess we'll wait and see. But for you, if you were to choose one commodity right now that you're the most bullish on, what do you think it would be? Ooh, that's a toughie. I, you know, I'll, uh, I'll zag where others zig, as we like to tell our, our audience here at the Calandra Report. <laughs> I'll zag where others zig. And um, I mean, of course, battery metals are on everyone's mind. And uh, that, that covers a wide range of metals. I'm going to go right now with something that still hasn't had tr tr true liftoff, but is very important for agriculture, uh, uh, some battery metals uses, and uh, of course, as an alloy, and, um, and, and very undervalued, especially compared to some of these monster moves in, in copper, in palladium, in platinum, now starting up again. And I'm going to say zinc. The big zinc, okay? And talk about obscure. There are uh, several uh, obscure companies, one uh, that uh, you know of up there in the Yukon where we were up together. Uh, fire, uh, um, that's uh, a Fireweed, uh, Brandon McDonald's company. There's one uh, very interested in right now that's way underpriced when it comes to zinc and it's in the Republic of Ireland. That's uh, a fellow who's running that, that I, whom I've known for many, many years, Bart Jaworski, and it's called Group 11 Resources. I think it's like a, I don't know, in, uh, in Canadian, it might be a 15 cent stock, but it's a tiny market cap. And they had some great zinc possibilities there uh, on uh, wholly owned and optioned in properties. So zinc. <laughs> And of course, the big a great... and the big zinc, which is uh, a part of the Ivanhoe Mines operation in uh, South Africa. Okay, yeah, definitely nobody is talking to me right now about zinc. So good to get some companies to look at there. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about what you like about the market and, you know, why it's why it's the most bullish metal for you right now. Well, you know, it's a um, it's, it's not what you would call a robust market, uh, uh, zinc that is. Uh, and, you know, I th there are a couple zinc proxies that you can buy in the stock market. And of course, uh, um, you know, it's possible to uh, uh, actually own the commodities uh, through paper, whether it's an ETF or a futures contract. Um, but you know, like most things, I, I tend to believe that zinc uh, companies that that are undervalued will get bought um, uh, by oh, by larger commodities operations that are looking to round out their portfolios. You know, zinc as as a in addition to crops and agriculture is super important. You know, zinc in in, uh, in one of my favorites. Uh, zinc oxide, which I, you know, lather myself in uh, for sunscreen here in California. And by the way, I heard you guys had some terrifically warm weather uh, recently up in Vancouver. And I uh, hope yes. you rented a hotel room because you don't have air conditioners. It was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here in um, the San Francisco and in Tiburon, Sausalito, Mill Valley, we have what the Chinese um, call free air conditioning, and it's the marine layer. So uh, what, what you saw was so unusual, and in the Northwest too. And uh, of course, uh, we could shift to climate change and its effect on the stock market, but that's not my bailiwick right now. So anyway, zinc, yeah. agriculture, chemicals, um, and of course, uh, as an alloy. Yeah, okay, so lots of things to like about zinc. I do want to talk about, you know, the green energy metals, because I know you follow that. 
segment. And I think the question for me today is how, how are you approaching that? There's so many ways that you can get into those green commodities right now. Like you could go battery meadows, you could go uranium, you could go even copper, which maybe debatably is in fact a battery metal. So how would you make that approach? Yeah, copper, probably copper is, uh, is probably more copper in any vehicle these days than anything else. And as you know, even out here, uh, you have people like contractors and stuff talking about how valuable copper cathode is. Uh, and it's important. Uh, and, it's, and it's liquid in terms of being able to transact in copper, whether it's copper contracts, copper companies, copper cathode sheets and sheets of it in your garage, maybe, if you're really into it. Uh, um, it's a battery metal. How do I approach battery metals as investments? It's, uh, it's a très risky, you know, <laughs> I have to say. It is, um, it's something that companies are trying to take advantage of by renaming themselves, you know, uh, which is happening all over the place. You know, uh, and as you know, reminds you of the early 2000s with uh, 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 Forlorn, and abandoned gold companies trying to become internet companies and then and then becoming cryptocurrency companies and now of course becoming either marijuana uh, i should say cannabis marijuana is a pejorative term uh, cannabis companies or um, you know as we know uh, energy metals companies i look for anything that's cheap almost impossible to find right now I look for companies whose shares, and my investors have the formula, my, 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 my investors, my subscribers uh, have the formula for how a, an equity uh, sets up to duplicate its performance as a mean stock. And, what, and one of the things you look for, I'll try not to give away all the secrets, but um, one of the things you look for is a pattern, right? These things move on vaporware, which is also known as news releases or press releases, vaporware. <laughs> um, if since uh, March of uh, 2020, you've seen these kinds of crazy moves and then naturally the companies take advantage of that 50% move in one day or 100% move in two days or 5,000% move, or even to yesterday, the day before, uh, Spartan Resources, which I own, right? Tiny, tiny Ontario Explorer. And uh, it owns a 10% uh, of VRB Energy in China. VRB is a vanadium storage battery technology company that's building megawatt um, uh, uh, storage and taking part in construction there in China with its laboratory. You know, all of a sudden it's done a triple, right? Overnight. It did that earlier, like you know, I want to say a couple months ago, but some of these have that pattern. So I always look for that. And when the, when the meme gives, and by the way, Spartan actually has some great exploration uh, possibilities in Ontario. And, and that's why I originally owned the stock. But then when news came out that they owned a piece of VRB Energy and VRB Energy might hook up with Ivanhoe or Ivanhoe Capital Acquisition Corp. Ivanhoe owns most of VRB Energy, right? the stock got ballistic. There are, uh, I think, and by the way, that, that's the speculation. You can take advantage of the speculation, but I think it's always safe to get out way early and get in way early, you, you, you know? So, so that's one way. Uh, another way to, to identify a likely candidate is by getting to know the CFO, the CEO, and feeling them out on uh, obviously not exactly what's coming up, but how they view themselves. Have they done a name change? Well, if they've done the name change already, probably forget about it for now. Um, but if the name change is coming, you know, it'll probably get a, 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 a pop. And once again, that pattern, look at, um, you know, I've mentioned this one before, it's a silver, uh, uh, a gold property owner. And I, you know, I was just up there twice in three months uh, up in the uh, Comstock load in uh, Western Nevada, Virginia City. And that's uh, Comstock Mining, which is uh, L-O-D-E. And L-O-D-E has become a synonym for these 
you know, intense wild moves on like 50 times its normal volume, 50 times its float, right? So uh, do I think that that uh, uh, gambit is, is still continuing in the market? Yeah, because as you know, there's a lot of, there are a lot of folks and uh, apparently some of those folks worldwide aren't going back to their jobs because they think they can become full-time investors. Uh, boy, are they wrong. But in the meantime, you know, they'll take their, their money and they will explore some of these opportunities. Okay. And I know you said you don't want to give away all of your secrets. So hopefully we won't, we won't make you do that. I do want to ask maybe a little bit more about your portfolio and how it's performed this year. And if you want to mention any standouts or some of those obscure stocks that you're feeling excited about in 2021. Well, let me, I'm going to, uh, I know I can look at, I know I can look at my screen and, and still, you know, I own about, I and, and my family own maybe about, I'm going to say like, uh, I don't know, 35 different names, not counting three or four blue chips that we inherited. And uh, let me just read a couple of these things. Some of these things are way uh, unknown. And, uh, and uh, Sonoro Gold is a great example. Sonoro is run by a guy named Mel Herdrick. I mean, he's the, the geologist. He doesn't run it. John Darsh and his partner can uh, uh, run it. But it's in Sonora and uh, uh, not far from Hermosillo in Mexico. And Mel, Mel and I go back a ways. He's probably in his 70s now. He's terrific. He just did a great interview with him. He lives there too. And he's married to, you know, he's a Mexican family. Sonoro is fully intent on becoming a producer sometime in the next 12 months. And it looks like it's done a lot to put that together. And, you know, here's a stock that was, uh, I don't know, three, four cents. And now it's, um, uh, and I'm talking US right now. Now Sonoro is uh, 25 cents. So that's, that's one, you know, everyone loves the fact that things are becoming producers. I own some larger uh, uh, wannabe producers or new producers. Everyone knows that I own uh, 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 the Eagle Gold Mine in, in Yukon, which is Victoria Gold. That's John McConnell's company, but very few people, and this is in the, the, the client report today, very few people understand the connections between Victoria Gold and Banyan Gold. And when I say very few people, not, not you and I, I mean, you know the connections and uh, uh, metals investors, Canadian investors, investors in the Yukon up there uh, understand that the Eagle Gold mine for Victoria has been terrifically uh, successful. So far, it's, you know, it's really killing it on, uh, uh, on consistency, on visibility. And today we had a, a report from Sprott.com that, that said, well, you want to own Victoria Gold, but you don't want to pay these, uh, the, you know, the price right now, you know, the stock is up maybe 100% in the past four or six months. Um, well, how about Banyan Gold? which I'm pretty sure you and I have seen together. I've seen it a few times. And that is, uh, you know, about as close as you can come to the claims and that Victoria Gold controls and also the claims uh, and also the Eagle Gold Mine itself. Uh, Banyan has, you know, has been putting out quite a few um, terrific assays. They share the same VP of exploration, Paul Gray, of course, uh, a Tara Christie and of uh, Banyan, uh, who goes back a, a ways, a, still a vibrant young um, miner, and her family go back in the Yukon. She's married to John McConnell, who runs Victoria Gold Mine. And you look at some of the assays that are coming out of of uh, uh, these new discoveries that Banyan Gold has, like Powerline. And then you look at its um, uh, claims and its claims map and how close they are, not just to Victoria Gold's claims, but to Alexco, another company uh, in that part of the Yukon. And, and you, you can see why the Sprott.com analyst, uh, um, uh, Brock Salier, 
says that you know you're buying Victoria Gold for two cents on the dollar. That's how cheap Banyan Gold is to Victoria Gold. So that's one. You know, I, I'm, I, 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 there's so many of them here. Let me just pick out one or two others because I'm going through them now. I, um, I mentioned Spartan. Uh, some of these haven't had uh, a move. I love Maple Gold. Uh, it's in Quebec. Quebec is probably my, my number one, um, what do you say? Jurisdiction along with Nevada, right? Uh, Quebec. It has uh, so many companies that I, I love and have owned for a long time, whether it's Golden Valley Mines, uh, more or less a proxy for Royal, for Abitibi royalties, or Azimut Exploration, which is Jean-Marc Lulin's company uh, and the Elmer Gold Deposit. Oh, QCX Gold, uh, Amex Exploration. Some of these have had terrific moves. I mentioned Maple uh, and uh, I think Maple's going to see uh, another lift off here any day now. Maple Gold, it's doing okay. Uh, uh, if you're an investor, nothing can just be okay. It's got to hit it out of the park. Um, and um, I know I'm I'm missing some here. Let me see one more, maybe. Uh, I mean, because we're on the obscure theme, I will hit you up with. Uh, in Nevada, Ridgeline Minerals. Ridgeline's actually doing well. One of my absolute favorites in Quebec and Alaska is Kennerland Minerals. And Kennerland's uh, run by a, a, you know, a youngish guy who, who also is recently uh, married, uh, uh, Zach Flood. And, and Zachary, I, 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 uh, I knew Zach's father, Ed Flood, a very well-known geologist who goes way back to the Ivanhoe days. And um, he's not with us now anymore. But uh, I think Kennerland is one of those companies that is showing assay by assay at its different properties across uh, the northern part of this uh, continent that it will have a terrific discovery. And its partners, uh, whether it's Newmont or Sumitomo, entirely believe in Zach and his team's work ethic, uh, which is prodigious. So uh, there you go. There are a few. And um, once again, I'm, I'm always willing to uh, use another prop here, but maybe you have another question first, Charlotte. OK, let's, let's try another question, because we're talking about the juniors. I guess I'd like to get your take on just the general health of the junior exploration sector at the moment. I know last year we kind of saw a big funding rush and ideally, I guess this year, we would hope to see those companies using that money to make discoveries like you've been talking about. So what is your, if you're taking the temperature of the exploration sector, what do you see? Well, because of the flow of capital, there aren't as many zombies, you know, uh, uh, tiny companies that are run out of file cabinets in some dusty corner of some office, whether that office is in uh, Colorado or Calgary uh, or Montreal. I, um, I tend to um, believe that the capital health of them is, is good, right? They've raised money. But there are so many companies now who are rushing to come out with assays. And you have to wonder sometimes, uh, you know, I, I'm always looking for true width on a, uh, if it's a, you know, if it's a, you know, an angled vein that, uh, that can show us some terrific uh, uh, grade and, and, and not just grade, but also, uh, you know, how wide the thing is and how much you might get out of it, what makes it economic. I think 80% of all these assays that are coming out nonstop here in the summertime, by the way, even today, you know, three, four, five years ago, you know, the market was dead July and August, but I'm looking at a record number of press releases. I get contacted by folks, uh, text, email, and two phone lines. Like I'm, I'm getting hit up 10, 12 times a day by, by people and companies 
that I, I've either ne never heard of or just came out. I, I'm, you know, it's worrisome. Uh, whether that, um, ha, you know, how those companies get their clocks cleaned and their investors' clocks cleaned, as in, you know, fail to meet the expectations, remains to be seen. Uh, you know, which is a great reason why you have to hope that a super cycle that may be starting continues. I, um, I, I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed, any analyst or uh, newsletter writer or uh, CEO of another company or investor who says they're not overwhelmed is, you know, they're yanking your chain. There's, there's just way too much information. I, Charlotte, I mean, you keep an eye on press releases and, and news and, and, and all these kind of like, all of a sudden they're like, everybody's an expert on, on gold or silver, or copper, or, you know, or nickel, nickel I love. Um, I, I, I don't know, it's getting harder and harder to, to sift the, uh, the wheat from the chaff. <laughs> so, so to introduce my next prop, I'll have to say, I'll put my jacket on and I'll say, so you talked about green metals. Well, what about, you know, I mean, I, I don't like to point this out too much, but as an investor, I do have a couple of marijuana, uh, cannabis investments. And um, here's another prop. This is from uh, my number one cannabis company here in California, looking to take over California and New York in terms of everything, you know, from, from genetics to growth to, you know, vertically integrating its entire operation. So uh, uh, Kaliva, which is called the parent company, was a SPAC. And a SPAC is a special acquisition corp, blank check company. I'll make this fast because I know it's running a little long. The, uh, a blank check company raises money to, usually at the beginning of the year at around $10 a share is, seems to be the, uh, the level and then is tasked with using that money to, you know, to, um, there's my, uh, my Kaliva, the parent company uh, lo logo thing. I have it upside down for a reason. Why would you have a weed sign right side up? Anyway, uh, the, um, uh, when you look at some of these SPACs, they've, they've busted, right? In fact, um, and when you find a busted SPAC and you go and you meet the, the operators, as I did with uh, uh, the ticker on that one or the stock symbol is G-R-A-M as in Mary, F as in Frank. And I believe it, it, ex it trades in Canada too, but I don't know what that one is. Um, wh when you go to visit these companies, you realize that the operators have pulled this off in many different industries. And, and they're taking the approach that there is an entire wave of people who are willing to say, cannabis, taboo, no taboo anymore. I mean, everybody wants it. Now you're saying, oh, come on, this is, you know, we've been in this since what? Six, eight years? Canada started it because it, it has such a, an innovative approach to raising capital for, new age ideas and companies. Uh, but the real market that, that the Canadian growers are after and, uh, and other types of companies, whether it's uh, synthetics, edibles, and so on, is the United States. And the United States largest two markets are New York and California. And California is really messed up in terms of how it introduced legal cannabis. You know, after 21 years of having medical cannabis, legal, it took the medical cannabis rules and it applied it to recreational cannabis and totally messed up. Other states have gotten it right uh, uh, or correct. Colorado, best example. Uh, Nevada also. And uh, Las Vegas is becoming something of a, a capital for cannabis for travelers. So I'm going to say, um, you know, that's the, the other green revolution. And I think that it has a ways to go. And I'm not uh, Johnny come lately to cannabis, but I am very, very careful. I've only had two or three, and I've passed up opportunities in private placements and in private companies. Uh, the other one is, uh, it's an engineering company that uh, 
I'd say probably 70% of their clients, 65% are in cannabis and that's uh, Urban Grow, UGRO on the NASDAQ. That's not a SPAC, but it's something like a SPAC because it raised money at 10, now it's trading uh, just below 10. Whereas uh, uh, the parent company slash Kaliva slash GRAMF is trading at five and a half dollars, way below its SPAC price because of a delay in the mergers and acquisitions that it's been trying to put together. I like SPACs if they're showing strength, but I also like SPACs if they're orphans. And uh, that one's an orphan. Ugrow or Urban Grow is an engineering firm that doesn't grow, but it provides the services. And I, I love that too. Okay, really interesting that you bring up cannabis. We do cover it at INN, although I don't personally, so I, I won't pretend to be an expert, but that's definitely a theme I've been hearing, you know, this kind of awakening of the US. So really gonna be interesting to see where that goes. Before we just wrap up and let you go, any final thoughts that you would wanna leave the audience with? Well, Charlotte, your, um, your audience, our audience, my audience, they're investors, right? You know, you can read them chapter and verse on uh, on the philosophy of, I don't know, the philosophy of exploration in Australia or the, the, the geologic dynamics of, uh, of, 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 of behavioral finance when it comes to mining companies. I tend to believe that we need to look for uh, properties that are economic, uh, individuals who run those companies who are honest. Um, and uh, I won't invest in a company unless I know, I know them and have known them for a while. Uh, because as you know, everybody gets burned in the business of investing and everyone gets burned twice or three times in the business of investing in mining companies. The, um, I would say, you know, one day all this free money is gonna come you know, crashing down just like it did uh, in uh, March of, I believe it was 2000 with the NASDAQ, one March day, wham. And, it, and, you know, it took quite a while to recover. This time it could last, you know, the good times could last for years, but when the good times end this time, I, I think they're gonna stay away for a long time. And by the way, the only cryptocurrency I own now, because, uh, uh, you know, I was fortunate to get out of those with a tiny profit, it, it, uh, although I did make a lot of money in those three or four years ago, is PAXG. And PAXG, P-A-X-G, is a, a real-time proxy uh, um, blockchain-powered uh, um, investment in gold. So if one day you wake up and it's 3 a.m. and nothing's open, not, not, not Sydney, not, not Hong Kong, not, you know, not Istanbul, PAXG, you can trade it real-time, 24-7 and it reflects the price of gold. And one day these kinds of investments, uh, whether it's uh, you know, the Sprott, a, a gold CEF central fund or other uh, stocks or the cryptocurrencies will trade at a huge premium to their value because everyone's gonna wanna own whatever they represent. So there you go. All right. Well, sounds like a good place to wrap up for now. Thank you so much for coming on to share all your thoughts with us once again. Always a pleasure, Charlotte. I'll definitely see you on the road, hopefully in New Orleans at the New Orleans conference, uh, maybe at the Precious Metals uh, Summit and uh, look forward to being real again. Fingers crossed the next time we'll be in real time. Uh, until then. Okay, andale and uh, andiamo with Dalia. Okay, and once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Tom Calandra.